Toastmasters? Yes, Toastmasters. Toastmasters, is it that you told us that there's a specific reason you wanted to be cremated? Like you never divulged the life of it. Can you tell us why you want to be cremated? Yes, because when I'll be cremated, then only I can be turned into ashes and then only we can be burnt to be cremated. Oh. <laughs> yes, Toastmaster. Um, like this is the serious one, I would say. Okay. You're asking me, uh, anyone who will be showing for your funeral, who cares for you to have a party only after 13 days. Do you really think that we can come over the morning period or just after 13 days, have a party about someone we just lost? Isn't that a bit uncaring? Isn't that a bit self obsessed? Yeah. You're asking us to have a very fun mood when we have just died? I can't, I can't make sense of it. It's not, I'm not unable to make sense of it. Why do you do this to us? Firstly, <laughs> thank you so much for loving me this much, Master. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I know there is a certain amount of grief when a person dies and I can't eliminate that. But what I feel is that this whole process of when a person dies to their funeral to the 13th day and everything, it is made in a certain way that people feel even more sad about it. Like for the 13 days, if anyone visits your home and now you're perfectly alright, they'll visit your home, they'll make you cry, they'll make you remember me and then you'll be even more sad, right? So that is why I wanted to have an after party. Like, see, most of us are not very comfortable with funerals and all of us are comfortable with parties. A party at the beach side where you're getting free alcohol, where you, where you can get a chance to win diamonds. So you will come to that and you will forget about me, I'm telling you. But yes, I, I do get the <coughs> thing that you're saying that after, you know, being in the mourning period for 13 days, how can people be in the party mood? I guess that was your question? Exactly. Yeah, so I also feel that this is somewhere right and maybe we can, <coughs> you know, maybe we can have small activities in those 13 days as well. Like, um, okay, see, I, most of you might know, I am a person with a lot of interest. So celebrate me in those 13 days. My interest, um, we can we can like have a pottery session with all everyone who's visiting. Just do not again give them a chance to cry away. Do not give them a chance to make you remember me. Then you will be in a balanced mood. I'm not saying that the grief will go, but you will be in kind of a balanced mood, right? Okay. So in that period, uh, we can have different different sessions sessions for like fun games or anything uh, each day. Like one day we do pottery, the other day we have bhangra class or anything, you know, we can plan it out. I'm not dying tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> yes, Toastmaster Vidhi. Oh, it's a long time to transform into Hira Pundi, so why would I want sticky ashes in my home for that long? <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, I did mention scientifically. So, ashes can be turned into diamonds scientifically in a lab. You don't have to keep my ashes in your home, okay? You have to give it in the lab and I'm sure you'll be placed at a good company now. You'll have enough money to, you know, get them turned into diamonds, so Master Vidhi. So you have to give the part of my ashes to the lab and then convert it into Hira Bundi. Please give it a bit. Okay. So Master Bundi, would you want any logic that you could That is a good point. I clearly was that. Thank you so much. But um, yeah, eulogy is something that we can add to the plan. So what do you think? Should we... Yeah, we can have one particular section at the party where... Okay, I have a lot of Toastmasters friends, but most of the people in my life are not comfortable delivering speeches. And about death, not at all. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get their eulogies recorded, right? And then at the after party, we'll have just one section apart. If someone really wishes to, you know, remember me, or like if someone has, you know, drank too much and then he just wishes to go and sit there. So we'll have uh, like videos played, okay? Sorry, Toastmaster. Yeah, we'll have videos of me and that person playing in the background and uh, yeah, and then you'll Aussie playing with that. I guess the drunk people will deliver the best eulogies. Okay, then we will have uh, a game for delivering the best eulogies, and the person who gives the best eulogies will get some ashes too. <laughs> there is alcohol sponsor for this only this time. I'm sorry, time will start. Was that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you said uh, we will have small amount of your ashes.
Every time you get a cake. So, how will you convert those actors into diamonds? I will not convert, I'm diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I said, it is, it is a scientific process, right? So, um, at the, as much as I have read about it at the labs, 10 for, uh, since, okay, from the starting, I'll explain. The human body is composed of four major components oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen, okay? And our ashes have hefty amount of um, carbon, okay? So that carbon can be used to make diamonds, but it is not enough. So 10% of the carbon in the ashes is used, and then 10% of the uh, lab carbon, the normal carbon, 90% of the normal carbon is mixed with that, and then the diamond is formed. So this is the process. You uh, with um, half a cup of ashes you can make a cup of <laughs> eight, eight diamonds. I guess that would be enough for people. Yes, this last one, but I've, this will be the last one as the card. I've read on Facebook that you can even convert peanut butter into diamonds if you compress it enough. So why use your ashes and not just peanut butter? It will be easier on everything. Peanut butter costs a lot and ashes are free. You will have <laughs>